All right, guys, here we are. Straight gangster, 88s are on there, uh, mock-up motor's in. But it is time to start uh, file fitting some rings to get this sucker together. Um, woo! I generally prefer, uh, I generally run the total seal rings, but we're running JE pistons in this motor and uh, the machine shop ordered up uh, JE rings for this. So uh, they, are, they are labeled. I'm gonna spin it around for so you. So guys, uh, Tuesday's video. Um, I'm here editing it up as my paint is dry. Uh, I'm working on uh, a loft to the stacker trailer that we have. So uh, guys, it's, it's taken a lot to be able to get um, our pieces back together. And we're still, uh, believe it or not, we're still like rebuilding from the loss of the Dirty 30. Like we started getting our pieces together and then we lost a homegrown hustler. So we had to sell off some of our stuff and we're slowly trying to piece all of our stuff back together. But we got a trailer right now. Um, that's pretty important and we're gonna have a big loft area in it um this area is gonna be uh for the i don't know probably about 250 dollars into the deal but we're gonna have a now a 12 foot loft area in it for all the merchandise and stuff like that so that's gonna be big but guys um this series is gonna be i don't know five probably seven parts of uh doing the 88s and the uh turbo motor uh, the new trick flow block and stuff like that for straight gangster. We're really looking forward to running that piece here uh, shortly. Um, we're still up in the air on dig or die. Um, we'll probably make that decision Wednesday. Uh, we'd have to leave Wednesday night. Um, so we'll make that decision if we go out there or not. Um, I'd have to buy a set of tires, um, which isn't just for that race. You know, we do, we do use them for multiple races. Um, but it's, it's a bit of a trip, too. You know what I mean? It's, uh, it's about eight hours, nine hours of driving each direction. And since all of our stuff isn't together, we'd have to bring it back up north. So, um, yeah. I wasn't looking forward to driving the truck in both directions just because of fuel money and stuff like that. But we do have a good car. The borrowed motor did do well up in New York. Um, I feel like I have a good, a good car. But you still have to spend that money... Um, it's still a gamble, no matter how um, how good you feel about it. Nothing's guaranteed, and uh, no prep racing. Um, it it takes a lot. A lot of a lot of things have to align for it to be your day. Um, I think we have a pretty good car, so we'll have to decide on it. It's still a lot of money to spend to be able to make that trip. So we're gonna see, um, guys. I appreciate you guys following along and doing um, supporting the journey and stuff like that. We're gonna. Um, we're going to do as much racing as we can this year. Um, if you saw in the last video, we got we got the truck, uh, the, our summer apartment slash uh, winter apartment and stuff like that. Um, that's going to make it so that we can travel with the baby and stuff like that. And uh, that's going to be that's going to be huge. And that's going to be a uh, that's that's going to be huge. That, that's important to us. It's it's needed. Uh, trust me, we didn't we didn't want to do that deal. Um, if it was just me and Maddie, still we'd still be sleeping in the back of, back of a pickup truck or. I mean, I couldn't tell you how many times me and Medi curled up in a sleeping bag um, and literally slept in the same sleeping bag because, like, you know, pretty hardcore stuff. But uh, without getting into too much detail there or taking up too much time, um, guys, I appreciate it. Um, this is going to be the next section of the video where we go through. Uh, we file fit the rings and fit the oil pan and doing all that tedious work that no one thinks about, you know, uh, fitting the starter and stuff like that. So when it goes in the motor, it's not all that, not a big issue, you know what I mean? You got to be able to go through and, you know, mock all that stuff up so that um, you don't run into problems down the road. So, guys, I appreciate it. Like and subscribe. Uh, hit that bell notification so uh, you know when we post a new video. Guys, um, merchandise, that stuff helps a lot. Um likes and uh, shares of the video and stuff like that that's huge guys we appreciate it me uh lady gangster mvp sexy rexy i know sexy rexy's wanting to get back to the racetrack as well um so we're gonna see what we can do but it is a lot of money to be able to go down there and take that chance since we do have to bring the rig all the way back up so that adds uh it basically doubles the expense of the trip and you know that's a lot so we'll see what happens guys we appreciate it we'll talk labeled to oil ring top ring and second ring when we're doing this we're going to file fit our second rings first the top ring here is harder than the second ring so if you do the top rings first there's a good chance that you're going to burn through 
the uh, second ring and your ring gaps will be a little oversized. Um, we're gonna run this, I'm not gonna say the number because it's all uh, personal preference to a certain point, but I'm gonna set the second rings, uh, set that gap first, and then the top ring. So I'm gonna go get the, the tools together that we need. I need a, we need a feeler gauges and we need a micrometer to set the depth because we're gonna go through here and we'll set this all at probably about an inch and a half down in the bore. Uh, make sure that the ring is square and then you check the gap and you start working at it. So guys, we got a hand file here. Dial Kelper set it an inch and a half and we're ready to get so after guys, it. So guys, when I'm doing this, you can see that the gap is right there. I go here, 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 and here with the micrometer set at a certain depth. Uh, if it's a used motor, uh, of course go through and give it a nice ball hone or whatever. But this, since it's a new motor, we're gonna do it just at one inch. Uh, if it was a used motor, I'd probably go a little bit deeper, but it is what it is. Uh, but you see this gap right here? That is way too tight. That is probably like five or 10 thou. So when I go through here and uh, file it, I'm just using a hand file. That's how I've always done it. Uh, so I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna count the amount of draws that it takes to open that up. So I'm gonna go get my feeler gauges, measure that out, uh, and then we'll go through and we'll open that up to my uh, my desired spec. I don't know here. if you could see this or not, but I did it on purpose. If you could see that the outside, you can see it there, the outside of the bore out here is narrower than the inside. I did that on purpose just for a demonstration, but we're gonna have to, you, when you do this, you have to angle it so that that gap is symmetrical from front, from the inside to the outside there. So when you go to do this, you gotta file a little bit on the backside to make sure that is so perfectly square in there. Why is this marked with tape, you ask? Well, that's because this is five thousandths under uh, what the target is. So I just know I need to clean it up just a little bit. If you could look in there nice and close. If it zooms all right, iPhone YouTube superstar, you can see that it is nice and square on that side. And it is nice and square on that side. So we just need to take another couple thousandths off to make sure our fit is proper. On these rings, you can see the dot. That means the dot is facing upward. I file fit my rings so that they are in the orientation that they're gonna be in the bore. But you can see now see how square that is there. Now it's a little bit of a precision work. This process took me probably about uh, five minutes just for this one ring, but this is the second ring. It is softer than the top ring. But now we gotta go through and we gotta back cut this all just a little bit. When you're going through and you're setting the mic, setting the depth on here, okay, you gotta notice that there is an angle on there. You go through and you set it and you set it. You don't drag this across the face. That coating on the rings there is, is pretty important. You don't wanna scratch that all up. And that is why we're gonna go through here and back cut this, make sure that there's no flakes here, uh, that when it's seen all its uh, rigors of being in a, this turbo motor here, that it's not gonna start flaking the rings. So guys, you can see the smallest little bit of shininess on that ring right there and that is the back cut slash the chamfer to make sure that ring doesn't flake so guys here we are this one like i said is five thousandths under this size you can see in here we got it all nice and square in there on the one that's five thousandths undersize this is almost impossible to do while looking through a camera but we got this five thousandths undersize right now so now i just got to open up this up I'll take another five swipes at it with the file. And when you're using a file, guys, files actually only work in one direction. So when you're doing it, just don't, that's not how this works. Um, file works, files work in one direction. And if you're pushing too hard, the ring's gonna squeak. Guys, you don't wanna do that. That means you're getting, adding frequencies and stuff like that into the ring and like, you're pushing too hard. It's just a finesse job that you have to solely work at. So this is a ring that hasn't been fit yet. You can see how tight that gap is there. So we'll be starting off with 25 swipes of the file. And that will probably open that up to about uh, 15th hour or so. And then, you know, we slowly start working at it because this is not a fast job. It's just a little, just something that has to be done. That is our gap after 25 swipes. You can see it's probably at, I don't know, five to 10 thousandths right there. Now, keep on working at it. Well guys, we have one side done. guys this is why you do 
the top rings second. Um, the, this one is fit. Uh, this one here, that was 30 swipes. And you could see that we literally have probably like a half a thou in there or something like that. It is in there, but that is literally 30 swipes just to get it in the bore. The top rings are much harder because that is what sees uh, the compression. That's what seals the cylinder pressure uh, primarily. But these rings are hard and it takes a lot to get these through. Now, if you did these ones first, you would burn right through the secondary ring. That's a lot softer. So guys, here we are. I ordered up a bunch of these carburetor studs uh, for oil pan studs. Uh, it's just cheaper to order it this way versus ordering a oil pan stud kit. Uh, I just know that because I've done this a few times. Um, then this is, um, these are actually a uh, valve cover stud kit for the Jessel belt drive system. And it actually uh, gives me a couple extras. But I'm going through and I'm going through and studying the whole motor here. Uh, everything will be essentially on studs. Not everything, but most everything. Uh, headers, of course, will be on studs. Uh, oil pan, belt drive system. Um, of course, the cylinder heads um, and stuff like that. Uh, not the intake because those are on a on an angle so then you can't get the intake off with the studs in it but by going through and using studs versus um, bolts the pressure is on the stud and not on the block itself so that goes through and makes it a whole lot easier uh, this is aluminum trick flow block that I am doing here and uh, it just makes it a little bit uh, less stressful on the block I uh, don't have to use my thread repair kit hopefully um, when going through and servicing this motor uh, like we're going to if we're going to run this car as much as we here want Here we are, to. we're using just some red Loctite here and then uh, double nutting all the threads. Uh, they are coarse on the bottle and fine on top. Some some threads here are uh, coarse on the top as well. Uh, I don't like to do that because uh, fine threads has more engagement. Like this is a 5 16 to 18 uh, thread on the bottom side and 24 threads per inch on the top side. Uh, so it makes it a, gives you a little bit more thread engagement. And I don't like using these hex bolts, so I went through and ordered up um, some 12 points. Uh, I don't know exactly where they are right now, but ordered up some 12 point, uh, just like these style. Just like these style, uh, makes it a little bit easier and actually uh, makes the head of the bolt a little bit smaller. The head of the nut. Well, guys, I got all the studs in there, got the belt drive system on there, all the uh, studs in the block there, all Loctited and tightened down. Um, all the studs in the oil pan. So now it's time to pull it all off, start file fitting some rings, and uh, start getting this this baby back together. So here we are, guys, with the trick flow block. This is a Jessel belt drive system that I need to fit up because uh, these blocks don't fit the Jessel belt drive system perfectly. Of course, it's the right cam height. You could tell uh, the cam tunnel lines up and everything like that, but. Um, it doesn't fully seat in there. So I went through, let's see here, using some quarter inch bolts in the dowel pins here. I was using some quarter inch bolts in the dowel pins here and you can see, I traced out that line there. Then we got to come in and clearance up in here till about that line there. Then you got to clearance these outer edges here. So we're gonna go in there either with a die grinder or a flap wheel and open these up a little bit. And then uh, I don't know if we're gonna have to have to decide here if I want to uh, move this around a little bit so that we either um, drill and tap uh, one in the center here and two on the outsides or how we wanna go about that. But we're gonna have to add a couple more bolts up here. Uh, this is just something that you have to do to fit the belt drive system on these blocks here. Uh, because it was designed for a slightly different style, but they do work perfectly fine. So I'm gonna give you a little update. Uh, I had to borrow Donnie's starter, go through, clock it, reorientate all that stuff. My starter, uh, it was a different style starter, high torque mini starter uh, for these applications, but uh, it didn't fit in this pocket here. So this is a Hitachi style starter where the uh, starter motor electrical part of it is offset uh, off this way. So I had to reorientate it to get the pan to clear, had to go through, and this is a freaking expensive starter, but had to go through and um, clearance all of this so that the oil pan can come on and off. What else do we have to do here? Um, 
slight modifications to the oil pan. I tossed the oil pan on the maca block in there and uh, marked out the oil drains here. Uh, made sure that got the Jessel belt drive system fitting on there, uh, all that stuff. And then over here, um, nothing, nothing too major. Uh, I gotta give a shout out to Kendall Goyne. Uh, I got this intake used off of him, but man, if you see that gap right there, that is how it's supposed to fit. I've bought a lot of good quality used stuff or what I thought was good quality used stuff. And it end up being junk. So shout out to Kendall for selling me a good piece right there. And uh, you can see what I'm doing here. This is a little bit um, not ab a little abnormal. This is the same top from my tall deck intake. But I think I'm gonna put that top piece on here, and then uh, once it's built and the thing is set up, then I can leave the throttle body attached to the cold side plumbing once that is done, and I'll build the plenum off of this piece. Uh, once it's all done so a uh, little bit of a reverse engineering but it has all my stuff there and avoids a lot of stuff all these pockets right there uh injector bungs get welded in there but uh my buddy's brand new welder uh decided to shut off the other day so uh that's no good where are we at so yeah we got everything else fitting uh when i built these headers uh, I tried to make them so that it would fit a 9.8 deck motor. Um, also, what else? A couple other little things. Uh, I did find a little crack in the header there, so got to weld that up too. And a couple other little things. Oil oil heater. Oil heater in the pan and some other stuff. But nothing major. Well, guys, I don't know how well you can see it, but right that back in there is, I believe it's a scavenge pump uh, suction for this uh pipe fitting right here it's actually an orb o-ring fitting probably a dash 12 um or 16 orb fitting uh for a suction here for an external wet sump you can see that but you can see that this pan here is set up for an internal wet wet sump as well but this is for an external wet sump you can see if we go in here you could see that slot in there kind of ish uh, you could see that slot in there. So that'd be for an external wet sump. For us, unfortunately, this guy is now too long, so it is hitting our billet oil pump. So, um, yeah, it is what it is. Looks like we're gonna have to cut this uh, out or down. But of, of course, when they build that, they put this in. Uh, second, you know, they cut this out. Uh, they weld up this piece first, and then they'd put this in. So, uh, yeah. We're not going to use this deal here, but we'll have to come up with a solution. I think I'm just going to cut this back and cut this out, and we'll go put, uh, just put the regular plug back in here, so then this just won't be used. Um, it'll be a, it's an O-ring fitting. It's an O-ring fitting. And uh, we'll just have to use this as a block off, as maybe like a secondary drain type deal, because we're gonna have to go through and we're gonna have to cut this um, off to be able to fit the oil pump in there. I already measured the, measured the oil pan clearance. To measure the oil pan clearance, I'll walk you through that process. So to measure the oil pan clearance, of course you, you don't have it resting on things, but we don't have the tripod here. So you'll measure from here to the base, here to the pan rail, average that out, and then you put it up to here and measure it to the bottom of the pan. Then you need to have anywhere from a quarter inch to a half inch of clearance. And we're right around, uh, we're just over a quarter inch of clearance with no pan gasket. So uh, we should be good there for to have enough clearance from the pickup to the bottom of the pan to make sure we don't suck this pan uh, dry or restrict the amount of oil going into the pan. Well, guys, when I'm torquing this down, uh, of course, I pre-lubed all the uh, bearings, but you don't want to turn the crank when you're doing that. Sorry, I'm self-filming here and I don't have the tripod, so it's a little bit difficult. But pre-lube all the bearings, set the crank in place, pre-lube the main cap, set those in place. Then you work from your inside out. So you go this one, then this one, then this one, then that one, then that one, okay? And you notice that I don't have any of the, the uh, cross bolts in the cross bolts in it yet because I got to get these all down in, in place. 
We'll be going to about 110 foot pounds on these. Right now they're set at 70 and I'll go through and uh, once I get these all down to 110, I'll go and put these in um, do the cross bolts here. So you gotta get the crank and main caps laying nice and flush first, and then we'll go and do the cross bolts. And guys, it is, uh, it, uh, it turns pretty nicely here. So I think we're gonna have ourselves a hot rod. Action? Yeah. So depending on how all these videos play out, this might be uh, part two, it might be part three, I don't freaking know. But uh, previously I mentioned about these washers and people ask occasionally, uh, what way do the washers go? On a, with studs, it doesn't really matter, but on a bolt, I'm gonna show you because these cross bolts are bolts and not studs to make it a little bit easier. Otherwise, you gotta remove all the studs before to get the main caps off. With a bolt, you just rip the bolt out. But, the countersunk in here, okay? That faces the chamfer of the bolt. The bolts have a chamfer on them, if you could see in there, kinda, okay? When you put it on the right way, see how it makes it nice and flush? Yep. If you put it on backwards, See how there's that gap there? Yep. Okay, that's that's the reason for a bolt. On the stud, it doesn't really matter, uh, but it is good practice to always have that up. So when I go to put these on here, I go through and you know, doo -doo -doo, put a little bit of, just on that fillet there, okay? And when you put this on, it's gonna squeeze a little bit out, do a little bit of a turn. Could've used a little bit more there. Go through, rotate a little bit, and you can see a little bit of it coming up. Then on the flat side, just go through, do, do, do. roll, 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 roll. No, you don't have to be Picasso or nothing like that. You just gotta make sure it's all there. And then since it is a coarse bolt going into aluminum here, uh, the coarse steel bolts are coarse as well. well. We'll go through and do two streaks on here. If it was fine thread, I'd probably just do one, but. Since they are cold, coarse, go through here, and then drop it in. Start it up. Sometimes I put a little bit, a little squeeze there, and a little squeeze there. Just as extra precaution. Then go through here. Torque it down the spec. Boom. How's that? We are removing. Donnie doesn't know either. He doesn't know why we have hamburger rolls out here either. Guys, for those of you that, just because this was the last video you'll have to go through, this had a pilot bearing in the back of it, okay? This bearing was in there. So, Mady doesn't get to have a hamburger roll for dinner tonight, because we had to use her hamburger roll to get this pilot I'm bearing out. out. But, no one here knew the trick. But, now I'm gonna go through here, torque the cross bolts here, of course, we're gonna start from the inside out. Not that it really makes that much of a difference, but it's good practice. We're gonna start here and then work our way out. And then uh, crank is in it. Then we start putting the rods uh, or the rings on the pistons and slap those in there. We'll probably do that secondary. We'll check the, uh, the oil clearances with the plastic gauge again for the rods before we put the rings on it. So it's, they slide up in there real easy. Well guys, I wish I had some better news, but this billet crankshaft that I bought that I bought as a standard, standard big block Chevy is not standard, standard. It's standard on the big block snout. That's why it turns so easy. Uh, those bearing clearances, we checked those, those are all good. I went to check the rod clearance and this crankshaft has a small block rod journal. So it's a two 100 rod journal and we need a 2.200, which means this is a hundred thousandths uh, diameter uh, too narrow. So, uh, I got a crankshaft sitting over there that I had the machine shop do up as a spare. And uh, it's not a billet crankshaft. It's a, it's a factory GM cross drill crankshaft. Um, we've made 14, 1500 with blown, blown alcohol applications uh, where the snout is trying to get ripped off by the uh, blower and stuff like that. But still, um, this crank right here is definitely not the quality of this crankshaft here. So uh, I guess that puts me in a little bit of a predicament here. I think I'm gonna throw that crankshaft in it, but uh, 
I think this weekend's race at Union is going to be fast. And uh, I'm not sure I want to go fast, fast with that crankshaft in this brand new motor. So, unfortunately, I'm into this crankshaft, a used crankshaft, uh, dang near the price of new because you can't get new stuff. So, uh, I guess that just adds to the troubles a little bit. Um, I don't know. See what happens. We are searching for a crankshaft to replace this one, but it took me quite a while to find this crankshaft, and it wasn't even the right one. So, see what happens.